In this lesson, we're talking about medians and altitudes, and we're talking about the point of concurrency for both of those special segments and triangles. So since in this lesson we're talking about two kinds of segments, you will have two days to get through the assignment for this lesson. So vocabulary. Median of a triangle is a segment whose endpoints are a vertex of a triangle and the midpoint of the opposite side. So in this activity that it's describing, it wants you to either construct using perpendicular bisector construction or use paper folding to find the midpoint of the sides. So I've already done that. And P is the centroid. It is the, po the point of intersection of the three medians. In your book, it's also asking you to use a ruler to measure the lengths of each median and the subsegments defined by P. So I've done that here. And in the next screen, you'll see that they are asking you to notice something about the lengths of the segments. So what I'd hope that you'd notice is that since um, P, we know, is the centroid, These are the parts of the medians. So we definitely can see that the centroid does not uh, bisect the medians. The centroid is not the center of each of those segments. It's not cutting it in half. However, the two parts of the segments do have an interesting relationship. The longer part, the part from the vertex to the centroid, is twice as long as the part from the centroid to the midpoint. So in this diagram, what that comes down to is that if whatever the length of AP is, it is twice as long as the length of PX. So the pattern that we observe in the measurements is that the parts, the subsegments, of the medians are not equal, but The segment from vertex to centroid is twice the length of the segment from centroid to midpoint. So if AX is the length of a median of a triangle from a vertex A, and P is the intersection of the three medians, also known as the centroid, write an equation to describe the relationship between AP and PX. Okay, so AP equals two times PX. So it's asking in part H to write an equation to show the relationship between AX and AP. So AP is two-thirds the length of AX. And then again, it's asking you to, in this activity, cut out the triangle and punch a small hole through P and try spinning the triangle around the pencil point. How easily does it spin? It should spin very easily. Point P, the centroid, uh, your book calls it the balancing point. Other textbooks may call it the center of gravity.
So here we have the centroid theorem, which is saying the same thing that I said about two screens ago, that the length of the segment from the vertex to the centroid is two-thirds the length of the entire median. So in example one, part A, they're asked for the length of segment AG. They're told that AF is 9 and that CE is 7.2. Well, AG is a part of AF. So CE, I don't need that at all. I'm asked for AG. That's going to be two-thirds of AF. So they take two-thirds of 9 and get 6. I'm asked in part B for the length of GE. So GE is part of CE, so this time I do need that CE. So if I'm asked for GE, well, they say take two thirds of. They say to take two-thirds of CE. And CE is 7.2. So two-thirds of that would be 4.8. And CG plus GE will equal CE, so that means GE equals CE minus CG. We just found that CG is 4.8, so when we subtract 7.2 minus 4.8, we get 2.4. And I believe on the next screen I have an opportunity to show you how to do that in a much simpler manner than the way that the book would have you to do it. In the reflect problem three, it says find the centroid of the triangle. How many medians must you construct? Since all three of them intersect at the same point, and I, know I only need two segments to intersect to find a point of intersection, two medians is all I need. In part four, I'm asked to compare the lengths of CG and GE. And I mentioned earlier that I'm hoping that on the next screen I have an opportunity to show you an easier way to do this. What you would notice here is that GE is half of CG. We are asked, is it possible for the six smaller triangles to be congruent to one another when we draw all three medians and end up with six smaller triangles? Yes, it is possible in an equilateral triangle. Number six, I have a triangle LMN, and maybe drawing it would be helpful. Badly drawn, but you get the idea. Vertex L is eight units from the centroid of LMN. So my centroid is somewhere inside the triangle. I'm going to label it C. So from here to here, it says that's eight units. It's asking to find the length of the median whose end point is at L. So it's asking for the length of this entire median. Well, we noticed in the previous problem that the long part of the median is twice as long as the short part. So uh, the 8 that they gave us, that is the long part. This missing part that I don't know, therefore, is 4. 
half of 8. If I add them together, I get the length of the whole median, which is 12. In number 7, it says let P be the centroid of the triangle and SW be a median. If SW is 18, find SP and PW. All right, so again, sketching it might be helpful. This is triangle S, T, U, and P is the centroid, and S, W is the median. So I know that S, W is 18. If I divide my, cent my median by 3, I will find the short part of my median, which is PW. So PW is 18 divided by 3, which is 6. SP is the long part of the median. It's twice as long as the short part. So it's 2 times 6, which is 12. In this example, they have us locating the centroid of a triangle in the coordinate plane. So, what's the problem asking me to find? It's asking me to find the centroid. What information does the graph provide? The coordinates. The centroid is the intersection of the medians of the triangle. So begin by calculating the midpoint of one side of the triangle. So remember that the midpoint of a segment in the coordinate plane, I know this was a long time ago, the midpoint is the average of the x's comma the average of the y's. So if I find the midpoint of QR, That's 0 plus 6 divided by 2, comma, 8 plus 4 divided by 2, which would be 3, comma, 6. So 3, comma, 6 is located here. And, oh, that works out really conveniently because when I draw the segment from the vertex opposite that side, that is a vertical line. And let's go ahead and find the midpoint of segment QP. That will be zero plus three divided by two, comma, eight plus zero divided by two. So this is one point five, comma, four. And, wow, that worked out really well also, because that's a horizontal line. And it's very easy to see where those two lines, those two medians, intersect. So let me come back to these fill-in-the-blank things that the book has. Draw a line to connect that point to a vertex. We did that. And we need to draw only two medians to find the centroid. And we did that. We found that the centroid is 3, 4. And now I'm going to share with you something that you won't, I don't think, find in the textbook. We did on this screen 
the average of two coordinates in order to find the midpoint of a side. I'm trying to find the intersection of all of those midpoints. So let's look at the x's in this triangle. And it's 0, 6, and 3. If I add all those x coordinates together, I get 9. Well, there's three points. Oh, how interesting. The average of those three x coordinates is this x coordinate. Huh, I wonder if that applies for the y coordinates as well. When I add my y coordinates together, that's 12. There's three of them, so when I average them together, look at how conveniently that works out. So this process that the book has you go through, it's not necessary for this kind of problem. We just showed a formula. So the formula to find the centroid is x1 plus x2 plus x3 over 3, comma, y1 plus y2 plus y3 over 3. So in this your turn, let us find the centroid. Negative 1 plus 9 plus 4. Oops. Divided by 3, comma, 7 plus 5 plus 3. Divided by 3. So that's 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4, comma, 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. There's your centroid. The next segment that we're discussing in this lesson is an altitude of a triangle. And the intersection of the altitudes is the orthocenter. So an altitude is a perpendicular segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side. Every triangle has three of them, and much like the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, the altitudes can be inside or outside or on the triangle. Well, perpendicular bisectors can't be on the triangle. Um, but the orthocenter, therefore, can be inside, outside, or on. And here they have us finding the orthocenter in the coordinate plane. So we have the triangle, and in step one, it says choose a vertex and then draw the altitude to the opposite side. So the reason why we're choosing point P is because the altitude from P to the opposite side is a nice, pretty vertical line. It's easy to draw. In step two, well, I'm all out of easy stuff, so now I've got to do some algebra. And since one of my points in the triangle is 0, 0, I'm going to use that as the vertex and find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to the opposite side so that I can find the equation of the altitude. So what they did is they found the slope of PQ. Remember this process from algebra last year. They found the slope of PQ to be negative 1. A few modules ago, we talked about how perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. And the opposite reciprocal slope of negative 1 is positive 1. So the line that has a slope of 1 and passes through 0, 0 is the line y equals x. So now I need to find the point at which y equals x intersects with 
x equals 2. So if I know that x equals 2, I can plug in 2 for x. Oh, well, if y equals 2, then my y coordinate will also be 2. Here we're doing it more on our own. Find the altitude that contains vertex A. Since BC is a vertical segment, finding the equation of a line perpendicular to it will be fairly easy. That's the perpendicular line to the line containing BC. So because BC is vertical, the altitude through A is a horizontal segment. And the equation of the line containing that segment is Y equals negative 1. Notice how it's going through negative 1 on the y-axis. Next it says find the altitude that contains vertex C. So C, I want to draw a line from C that is perpendicular to the line containing AB. So I need to calculate the slope of AB. Slope of AB will be 6 minus negative 1 over 6 minus negative 1, which equals 1. The slope of the altitude to AB is the uh, opposite reciprocal. which is negative 1. So I would use the point-slope form of the equation to write the equation of a line that has a slope of negative 1 and passes through 6, 2. So y minus 2 equals this negative 1 we found here. times x minus 6. And when we simplify that, we get y equals negative x plus 8. If you remember your algebra, which I hope you do, that's in slope-intercept form, which means that my y-intercept is this 8. From the plot point here, my slope is negative 1. So from there, I'm going to rise 1, run negative 1, getting me to this point. And when I draw that line, they intersect at 9, comma 8. Now they go through the process algebraically. And then in this reflect question, they're asking, could the orthocenter of the triangle be concurrent with one of its vertices? The answer is yes. And here's how. The definition of orthocenter is it's the intersection of the altitudes. In a right triangle, AB and BC, in this instance, are the altitudes. So they intersect at B. So to finish answering this question, I would say that yes, in a right triangle, the orthocenter is the vertex of the right angle.